In a world dominated by male criminals, there emerged a breed of women who shattered the glass ceiling of the underworld. They weren't mere bystanders or partners. They were the architects of chaos, the orchestrators of crime, and the most brutal female narcos in history. These women defied all norms, transcending the boundaries set by society. They challenged the notion that crime was solely a man's game. Brace yourself as we dive in to the untold stories of these formidable women, uncovering the secrets behind their rise to power and the trail of destruction they left in their wake. Avila Beltran. Meet Sandra Avila Beltran, the Queen of the Pacific. She was fierce and relentless, always pursuing what she desired. Her life was unimaginably different from ours and she became one of the world's most feared women through her family ties and sheer cleverness. Born into a wealthy and influential family, deeply involved in the Mexican drug trade, Sandra's father was a member of the Guadalajara cartel, and her uncle was a notorious drug lord during the 1980s. The Guadalajara cartel was infamous for its brutal acts, including the torture and murder of DEA agent Kiki Camarena, which shook the agency to its core. Despite the violence that permeated the drug trade, Sandra deftly navigated its treacherous waters, outsmarting her foes and expanding her own empire. Her wealth and power were legendary, allowing her to revel in a life of opulence with lavish homes, luxury cars, and private jets in Mexico and Colombia. Her ascent to power skyrocketed, when she began a romantic liaison with Juan Diego Espinosa Ramirez, a powerful figure who helped her secure a leadership position between the Sinaloa and Notre del Valle cartels, two major drug syndicates. Under her reign, thousands of killings took place under her command. During a recent interview, Sandra expressed no remorse for these drug-related murders, instead placing the blame on the government Sandra was closely related with Pablo Escobar's Medellin cartel and earned her title the Queen of the Pacific by smuggling massive amounts of cocaine across the ocean using tuna boats. Remarkably, despite her involvement in illegal activities, Sandra eluded capture for many years. However, her luck ran out in 2007 when she was finally apprehended in Mexico City. She was subsequently extradited to the United States, facing charges of conspiracy to import cocaine. Despite her legal predicament, Sandra Villa Beltran remains an enigmatic figure in the realm of drug cartels. Her tale is one of power, wealth, and peril, with her connections to notorious drug lords solidifying her status as a formidable force in organized crime. Melissa Margarita Calderon Ojeda was a woman who defied all odds to become one of Mexico's most feared drug lords. She was a female cartel boss whose journey to power, ruthless tactics, and ultimate downfall will leave you spellbound. Ojeda, also known as Latina, started as a 21-year-old hitman and swiftly rose to lead the special armed unit of the Sinaloa cartel, reigning over the drug trade in the United States. Her reputation for cruelty cunning and deadly marksmanship under the notorious El Chapo Guzman earned her respect and fueled a wave of violence, including murders, kidnappings, and street wars. With her fierce command of the Los Damasos Special Forces, a group of 50 elite hitmen, Ojeda terrorized El Paz and expanded her influence to Los Cabos within months. However, Ojeda's downfall began when El Grande, a seasoned gunman, was released in 2015 and swiftly usurped her position. Undeterred, she formed her own faction within the Sinaloa cartel, collaborating with other women involved in the drug trade. Ambushes and seductive disguises were their tools, leading to a trail of death. Eventually, in September 2015, Ojeda was arrested in Cabo San Lucas after being exposed by her boyfriend, El Chino, who was appalled by her sadistic nature and indiscriminate killings. Convicted for over 150 murders, including those of Sinaloa cartel members, Ojeda now languishes in La Paz prison. 
Her story stands as a testament to the deadly potential of women in the ruthless world of drug dealing. It's a chilling reminder of the unending bloodshed that plagues this illicit trade. Griselda Blanco, also known as Lucretia, Danes, and Archel Ban Lopez, rose to power through alliances, murders, and kidnappings. Her ability to change her appearance earned her the nicknames Black Widow and Chameleon. At her peak, she controlled a massive drug cartel, smuggling tons of cocaine into the U.S., earning over $80 million annually. Born in poverty-stricken Colombia in 1943, Blanco began a life of crime at a young age. She engaged in theft, drug dealing, and even kidnapping. Her first known crime occurred at age 11, resulting in a tragic death. Blanco's criminal journey included pickpocketing and sex work before entering the drug trade. Blanco married a criminal and had three children, but eventually killed her husband to focus on her business. She then married another drug dealer, Alberto Bravo, who helped her smuggle cocaine in New York City. Blanco's creativity shone as she designed lingerie with hidden pockets for drug transportation. In 1975, fearing law enforcement, Blanco returned to Colombia. That same year, she killed her second husband, earning the name Black Widow. In Miami, she associated with notorious figures like Pablo Escobar. She ordered numerous murders, using tactics like motorcycle murder. Her empire spanned from Colombia to the U.S., amassing millions of dollars. Blanco was assassinated in 2012 in Medellin. Her associates carried on her legacy, perpetuating the suffering of drug addicts. Blanco's story has been documented in books, TV shows, and movies like Narcos. Her rise to power, brutal tactics, and notorious reputation continue to captivate people worldwide serving as a cautionary tale about the dark realities and human costs of the illegal drug trade. In the 1980s, Jamaica Thompson, known as the Crack Queen of LA, was a prominent figure during the crack epidemic in the USA. From a troubled past in South Central Los Angeles, where she was forcibly evicted with her daughters, Jamaica's journey to becoming one of the biggest drug dealers in Los Angeles began. Starting as a teenager, she partnered with her high school sweetheart, Daph, dealing marijuana. But Jamaica's desire for money and control led her to venture into cocaine, selling large quantities while still in school. Her wealth grew rapidly, and she even bought a house in California with her boyfriend-turned-husband. Although she didn't resort to violence, Jamaica's fearless nature was evident when she got into a fight at Muhammad Ali's birthday party. However, her fortunes changed when Daff was found dead, causing the DEA to believe her drug empire was over. Undeterred, Jamaica expanded her cocaine business, hiring distributors across the country and establishing connections with Colombian producers. To legitimize her drug money, Jamaica opened a hair distribution business. Her wealth seemed boundless, but her partner, Percy Cheese Bratton, was arrested and provided evidence against her. After evading conviction for years, Jamaica was apprehended at her son's graduation. Facing charges of conspiracy and money laundering, she served 12 years of a 15-year sentence. During her time in prison, Jamaica found hope through Christianity and established second-chance evangelical ministries upon her release. Her story has come full circle, starting as a girl with no money and taking the wrong path to achieve wealth. Ultimately, she faced the consequences, witnessing her fortune vanish within months. And Edina Arellano Felix, a familiar face from the Netflix series Narcos, was part of the Tijuana Cartel, founded by her notorious brothers known as the Arellano Felix Brothers, AFB. And Edina's role involved managing finances and helping with money laundering to avoid the police. The AFB gained infamy for their involvement in drug-related violence and constant clashes with rival gangs, resulting in numerous deaths. One significant event was the bombing at Guadalajara's Camino Real Hotel, which killed two men and injured 15 others. While violence consumed the cartel, Enedina pursued an accounting degree until she eventually joined her brothers. Over time, 
the AFB's extravagant and violent behavior led to deaths and a decline in their influence. And Adina's fortune changed when her brother Eduardo was arrested in 2008 after a brutal turf war in Tijuana. Unlike her brothers, Enedina believed in forming alliances and collaborations to steadily expand the business. Her beauty played a role in establishing alliances with figures like Chapo Guzman, all in pursuit of financial gain. Enedina's story showcases the power and influence of women in the drug trade. Despite the risks, she rose to the top of one of Mexico's most notorious cartels, displaying intelligence, strategic thinking, and leadership skills. Her legacy as a prominent female figure in the drug trade continues to captivate and inspire worldwide. Enedina became the first woman to lead a criminal family, alongside Sandra Avila Beltran, highlighting the enduring fascination with women's abilities and their impact on this illicit industry. As the smoke clears and the echoes of their ruthless reign fade away, the legacy of these female narcos remains etched in blood-soaked history. They defied norms, challenged power, and proved that strength knows no gender.